Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the exercise class. Um, today, we go, we're only going to discuss one topic, which is deterministic work extraction. Um, so deterministic work extraction, uh, by this I mean a process in which we're always able to extract work uh, with certainty. And uh, we're going to consider the following uh, setup for this process. So there's going to be a battery, which we label as W, uh, which will be modeled as a qubit. So we have two levels in the system, and the energy gap between these two levels is W. Uh, and the system itself, we label as S, and it's just going to be an um, N-level usual system where we label the levels by their energies. EIS. It's going to start uh, E1S, so on till E. N S. Okay, uh, and now we start the process by assuming that uh, the the work battery is in a ground state, and the state of the system is diagonal in energy eigenbases. And what is our aim in this process? Our aim is to maximize um, V such that the transition given by, we start with the, yeah, state first system S, a tensor product with the state of the battery, uh, which is the ground state. Uh, and as a final result, we get the thermal state on S, and the state of the battery is now excited. So in that case, we just extract, extract the work and put it into the battery system. And we need to maximize V such that this transition is allowed by thermal operations. Uh, note, without the loss of generality, we can assume that the final state of the system S is the thermal state. Because, uh, because we can always, in the end, whichever state on the system S we get, we can always thermalize it to the thermal state with the temperature of the bath. Okay. Uh, and basically, because we made this assumption that in the beginning, rho s is diagonal with respect to the energy eigenbasis. Um, this actually, this problem actually just converges to a classical problem. As in, we have a system s, rho s is diagonal, so practically it becomes a, a vector of population x. And then the classical problem, we need to find largest V, this energy gap of the, of the battery qubit, uh, such that um, XS tends a product, or let's just say it's X, since we're only going to use it for system S, Tends a product the uh, the ground state of the battery, which is the vector zero one. Classically, uh, is um, yeah majorizes G majorizes so in a thermal sense um, the 
vector for the uh, okay, here. the vector for the thermal uh, state of the system S tensor product to the excited state of the battery. So this is the one condition that we also saw in the lecture that uh, is equivalent to saying that that transition is allowed is an allowed thermal operation. Okay, so this is something that we would like to uh, to find this V. Before that, we will see uh, we will prove the following lemma. So the lemma is. If I take uh, any y, which is the state of the system S, uh, the thermal ionization curve of the state y tends to product the ground state. Uh, sorry, the excited state of the battery uh, is a compression uh, along x-axis of the thermal miniaturization curve of y, the same y, tends to product the ground state of the battery. Yeah, and we'll draw a picture and we'll see how, how we prove that. Uh, maybe a quick reminder of what are the thermal modularization curves. So they are um, they're basically the same as in the concept of the usual modularization, but there you um, uh, you look at the modularization with respect to the Gibbs coefficients. So, basically, if we look at the definition, uh, if we have a vector x, then we can order this vector in such a way that xi over gi um, where gi is the uh, Gibbs coefficient for corresponding energy level, um, are in non-increasing order. So that uh, basically initially if we have the set of indices i from 1 to n, then we apply to these indices the permutation pi, which arranges these indices um, as pi over uh, of i, and then the this non-increasing order would be this condition. Pi n over g of pi n, and then the curve this thermal modularization curve would be given as a tuple on the corresponding axis of x and y as zs uh, sum from i equal 1 to k uh, g pi i. This is on the x-axis and the sum from i equal 1 to k, x of pi i. So basically, when you, when you draw this curve, you have the final, um, yes, you have the final zs here. And here, they sum up to 1, and then somehow you draw this. This curve. Uh, this curve is always always convex. I'm sorry if my my picture doesn't look so convex, but 
It is convex. Okay. Uh, so now we just want to compare these two major the thermal majorization curves uh, of this state and this state for any y. So let's do that. Okay, so say that the elements of the population vector y are say y1, y2, and so on, yn. Okay, then the first vector, um, which is the tensor product of this population vector and the excited state of the battery, would be written as, uh, so here, just for, um, just for convenience, I'll write it in, in one line and not in a column, but uh, it's basically a column. So the first n elements would be zero, and then the last n elements would be y1, so on yn. And Uh, and analogously, if we write the expression for the um, this state y tensor with the ground state of the battery, we get the first n elements. Okay, let's transpose. Uh, are from y1 to yn, and then the rest n elements are all zero. So this is quite straightforward. Uh, okay, and then uh, let us also for convenience name the energy levels of this joint system of S um, and the battery W as zero through one zero, so on N zero. So this is when the, the system S uh, is in a first um, energy, energy corresponding to the, to the system S being the first level and um, the battery being in a ground state and so on. And the rest of the elements are the same elements as here, but corresponding to the excited state of the battery. Um, right, and one. So this is just the labeling on the energy levels. Okay, uh, now let us first consider the, um, this, this vector. So we have Y and the battery in the, in the uh, ground state. Uh, suppose that pi 1 is the permutation that beta orders, so this, um, this ordering procedure which, uh, which arranges this xy over gy in a non-increasing order is, called, is also called beta ordering. Uh, so it's beta orders this uh, vector. Okay. Uh, this means that what happens to uh, the level ij, it gets to the, it, it is mapped to pi of ij. Now, let us consider, so we have some ordering here. Now let us consider the ordering for the case where um, the, the system is in a state Y and then the battery is in an excited state. So let's call this permutation pi two.
are just looking at how these two vectors are constructed. Can anyone now tell me um, what is the, yes, what is the connection between these two permutations? Uh, you mean this one? Yes. Yes, exactly. That's correct. So basically, because because uh, if you if you indeed if you compare these two vectors, um, they basically have the same elements inside, but uh, um, kind of the zero and one, the second index is swapped. So this is why. Uh, if we consider the permutation for this vector, uh, comparing it to the permutation which we've done for this vector, all we need to do is just make sure that ij is mapped to pi i and then um, not j. So this is the permutation pi 2, this is the permutation pi 1. So basically, uh, when you carry out this permutation, uh, your new ordering would be uh, pi 1, 0, pi of 2, 0, and so on. Uh, and here you would have pi of 1, 1, pi of 2, 1, and so on. Simply because we need to uh, for this excited state, for, from here, we need to take out the element from the other side. Okay. Uh, so now that we connected these two permutations for the both cases, let us look at the thermal maturization curves. So the x-axis points... of, um, yeah, let's say y tends a product with the excited state. So first, why are we only interested in x-axis points? Because the y-axis points actually, um, for these two vectors, they coincide with each other. Because if you see that uh, the coordinates for the points for the curve uh, the y coordinate is just um, corresponds to uh, sums of this um, elements of x of pi, and uh, we use since we use this permutation, they coincide with each other. So basically, what we need to compare are the x-axis points, and according to definition, this would be uh, the weight the sum from i equal 1 to k, uh, g1 of the weight. So g1 of the weight is just the corresponding to thermal, thermal uh, population of the excited state of the, of the battery, or weight, uh, and g pi of i. Uh, okay. Yes. And analogously, if we look at the x-axis points for the vector y tensor product the ground state on the battery, we get, uh, again, the same factor, sum, from i equal 1 to k, g0 on the weight, because, uh, yeah, so here here we have zeros, and here we have ones for the, for the battery state. And g of pi i. 
And basically what we see is that indeed, um, the only difference between these two coordinates is the constant scaling factor, which is given by these two coefficients or the ratio between these two coefficients. And we know how to write them. And it would give, be given, of course, by the Gibbs ratio. Okay. Uh, so now let me draw how it looks like. So say that, um, yeah, here we have. too close. So first I'm going to draw the, um, the thermal materialization curve for the excited state. I'm oh, sorry, no, maybe for, for the ground state. Let's first draw it for the ground state. Uh, so these are the points. Then here, here, here. So say it looks like this. This is for y tensor product one zero. Okay. Uh, so somewhere there is that SW. And there's one. Then how do we draw the, the one for uh, the Y tensor product, the excited state? So basically their Y coordinates, they coincide, which means that uh, the Y coordinate is still here for the first point. But then the, um, there is this rescaling by the factor of e to the power minus beta w, which means that, say, it lies somewhere here. And the same rescaling applies for this point. So it will be somewhere here. The same rescaling applies for this point. So it will be somewhere here. And this is the thermal majorization curve for Y tensor product, the excited state of the battery. Okay. Uh, so, and we will now we will use this lemma to find out the amount of the so-called deterministic work that we want to find in the beginning, uh, which would, uh, be maximal, but at the same time, so we need to maximize the W, but at the same time keep the operation uh, thermal. And uh, how do thermal majorization curves help with this? Well, you know that you can convert one state to the other if uh, their majorization curves lie uh, completely above or uh, completely above one another. And we will use uh, kind of this rescaling property when we will consider uh, this work. Okay. Is it more or less clear how we go around with proving this, uh, this lemma? Okay. You can all, so this lemma is in fact a part, okay, I will not uh, go in this way. Uh, is a, in fact a part of the exercise, so uh, if you don't completely, if you cannot completely absorb the proof now, then you can always look at the exercise again and try to um, derive the solution by yourself. The key of the solution is to consider permutation for one of these states and see how 
that permutation which beta orders the state is connected to the beta ordering of the other state. And that basically gives you the solution. Okay, so uh, now we want to find uh, this is where green, and we will proceed about it the following way. So we will construct our thermal curves. Uh, for varying states, uh, G tensor product um, the battery in the excited state for different values of V. So this is, as you remember, the final state that we want to achieve, which is the thermal state on the system S and the excited state of the battery. And and then we look for the largest W such that this curve, let me write it as T of G, is all below T of X and the product on the battery in the ground state. So yeah, we'll start with some x. Then uh, our aim is to find v such that this curve is all below that curve, which means in a context of thermal operations that we can, uh, this is an allowed thermal operation to transform from this state to this state. Um, moreover, because it's all below, this is kind of a certain uh, term of operation. Okay, so let me do this. Uh, so we will also draw, draw some stuff. Maybe I'll draw it just next to. So we start with the um, curve for G tensor the product the uh, ground state of the battery. Sorry, of the yeah of the battery. Uh, why do we start with this? Because or when we draw this by lemma, we can connect it to the uh, to the thermal majorization curve of the G tensor product, the excited state. Okay, uh, so because because G itself is a thermal vector, it is already um, kind of naturally ordered, and uh, basically. Uh, the xi over gi, the one, uh, the one that we have to, the the ratio that we have to order is always one, and hence this thermal majorization curve just has a constant slope uh, of one over z s uh, in x from zero to ZS, and then it's flat in the rest of the region, so ZS, ZS, W. Because here we only couple kind of with the, with the ground state. Okay, so let me draw this, Let's say, 
um, here is ZS, here is ZSW, uh, say here is one, then uh, it's just a And here it ends. So this is for G tensor product ground state. Now the next uh, next curve that we would like to to draw is the T G tensor product excited state um, of the yeah the excited state of the battery. Uh, given that the given the lemma we just uh, we just proven, uh, how is going to look? Yes, exactly. So, and this one looks very simple, right? So all we have to do is just to uh, change the slope by the factor of e to the power minus beta w z s. So now who will be this one, sorry, it's not very straight, but please believe me that it is a straight line. And this is going to be G tensor product. Uh, tensor product U1. So the excited state of the battery. Okay. Um, so let me just formally characterize this uh, curve. So it's going to be constant slope constant slope of yeah, e to the power beta v over z s in x from 0 to z s e to the power minus beta v and flat elsewhere. Okay, uh, now we want to compare it to the to our initial uh, state major uh, thermal majorization curve. So now the um, the curve that we are interested in is x tensor product the ground state of the battery, and. Uh, we are interested in a question of uh, when does this um, this curve of the initial state is all, all above uh, the state the curve of the G tensor product with the excited state, so the final state. And to answer this question, we just need to answer the question: When does uh, this curve x tensor product the ground states? reach one, height one. So, for example, oh, is there another colored marker which is still alive? It's relatively alive. So, for example, if this curve reaches uh, one after the point of E minus beta WZS, let's say, somewhere here, then clearly because of the yeah because 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 this this curve of g tensor product the excited state uh reaches reaches height one before before that um they will they will intersect somehow and then the uh the curve of the initial state wouldn't completely lie um uh, above the curve of the final state. 
and our condition will not be satisfied. On the other hand, if it reaches height one somewhere here, then we are all fine and safe. Okay, so hence we just need to compare these two points on the x-axis and see when W is maximized. So, let's see. Now we're looking at T X tensor product the ground state. Um, say that K um, so what we know about this is that, um, say that K is the first, um, the first argument of the permutation of X, which beta orders uh, this vector such that the sum from I equal one to K X phi of I equals one. Uh, then the, the x coordinate of this so such that uh, the, the x coordinate of this, uh, of this point when it reaches the height one is the following. So it's just zs uh, sum for uh, i equal one to k. Uh, g of pi i. Uh, and then, as I said, using this um, this com this visual comparison, we know that the initial the curve of the initial state is not does not intersect, or is at some point, or is not at some point below the curve of the final state. If uh, Zs e to the power minus wv, which is the parameter uh, characterizing the curve of the final state, uh, is that less or equal? Uh, let's see. Is equal to. Yeah, so we take the, the critical case when these two points coincide. So they're going to be equal to the set S sum from I equal 1 to K G of Pi by I. Uh, this means that E to the power beta W is equal to 1 over sum from i equal 1 to k g of phi i and then our final answer is we write it somewhere here maybe that the work w would be equal to uh, 1 over beta a logarithm of 1 over the sum which is also, if beta is one over kt, so it's gonna be minus kt log of this sum. Uh, yes, and it can also be shown that this result is connected to the uh, zeros uh, relative Rennie entropy. So we can also rewrite it as the following. Uh, yeah, let me erase something here. So it can also be rewritten as just kt s0 uh, x relative to the, um, the thermal population vector. 
and this can also be written in terms of free energies. So F0 of X minus F0 of the thermal um, state. And this is an important thing to remember because um, if, we, if we do a comparison with average work, so uh, this is a deterministic work. If we do a comparison with the average work that we can extract using thermal operations, uh, it is given to us by the first Rennie entropy, relative entropy. Uh, and it's important to remember that uh, deterministic work in this scenario is given by the zeroth. Uh, Rennie entropy and average one is given by the first. And this can also be used as a, kind of if somebody asks you, like what is, how, how can I physically interpret the relative, like the meaning of the relative Rennie entropy, you can say, oh, it characterizes the deterministic work. Uh, which we can extract in this scenario. And in fact, yeah, average work is yeah, bigger than deterministic work. Mm, this is just given this is just given by the properties of the uh, Rennie entropy. Okay. Uh, so this was how we uh, can use the thermal modularization curves also to uh, kind of visually uh, simplify the proofs that we we do for or we can um, how much work what what is the maximum amount of work I can extract and when is the operation allowed and so on so it's always good to maybe visualize them and then you immediately see uh, uh, which states are connected by thermal operations and which are not uh, in this one shot scenario. Uh, okay, and this is, was basically the first exercise from the series. I recommend you to just um, go through it again on your own, just keeping all this in mind. And the second exercise, uh, for the second exercise, you will need to prove the same lemma that we've proven about how the two thermal majorization curves are connected. Uh, but you will have to use the battery uh, a bit differently. So the battery will not be a qubit, but it will be a harmonic oscillator. So if you initially would write the uh, Hamiltonian of the battery this way, then now you'll need to write it as sum of n w and n from n equal yeah zero one doesn't matter zero to infinity and then the same the same it's fairly it's fairly easy proof if you understand the first one uh but you can also, this just shows that you can, in principle, also consider other types of batteries, not necessarily qubit, but um, having much more levels as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think this is everything I had for today. So if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, yeah, please feel free to register for the summer school. Send us emails about it if you want to help. It's very welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot.